Hello, welcome back. Did you go to confession yesterday? Remember the power of being forgiven and remember the power of being asked for forgiveness. This is a practice we should get into the habit of, not just only through Lent, but through the course of a lifetime. Today's gospel reading is from Matthew chapter five, and it talks about Jesus and what he believes should be done about his faith. He speaks to those around him and tells them that he has not come to improve their faith through the prophets or the law, but to complete it. What Jesus was trying to do was to make his faith better. As he looked around him, going from synagogue to synagogue to temple, healing in villages, walking by the Sea of Galilee, looking after lepers and those who were blind and lame, he could see that many in his faith were not living up to the promise of being true believers. Jesus wanted to change that. He wanted to make things better for all those who followed the Jewish faith. Jesus believed in tradition, the tradition of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, of the prophets and the law and Moses and all those who understood God and the power of the covenant. But he also understood that sometimes traditions need to be renewed and completed and revisited and re-energized so that people could understand them. In our Christian faith, we are so lucky to have many rich traditions, customs, rituals, many different saints from all different sorts of culture. But what we have in common and what we share all around the world is the belief in Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So together, the importance of tradition and renewal and reflecting the times is how our church grows, builds and creates the Kingdom of God. That's exactly what Jesus was trying to do 2000 years ago, to complete and create that wonderful Kingdom of God on earth. We have many traditions in the church and some of the rules and regulations have come down to us from the ancient prophets. Do you remember who went up to receive the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai? Yes, that's right, Moses. Do you know any of those Ten Commandments? Because basically they are the framework for the way we live our Christian life. They give us a guideline as to how we should behave before God and with those we love and those we don't even know. It's a framework, a guide, a signpost for good living and good loving. So my challenge to you is to go and check those 10 commandments. Perhaps you already know a couple of them. Some of them you've probably heard already. But I think it's really important that you understand what they are. And when I see you next time, I'll be asking you, one to 10, do you know the 10 commandments? I'll see you next time.